And welcome to a new series of iSpy, examining the extraordinary impact of video and surveillance on the way we live. There are now more than a million security cameras in Britain, and tonight you'll see how crime is being cleaned up in the town they used to call the Wild West of Wales. The woman hiring a hitman to murder her husband, but he's an undercover detective. How firefighters are using the latest technology to save lives. And the puppies rescued with a camera normally used on blocked drains. There's also a chance for you to help solve a crime with our I Spy appeal. First though, it's a terrifying thought, but imagine somebody somewhere out there in the crowds had a knife and was out of control. That's what happened in what's believed to be the first case where a murder suspect was followed and caught as a direct result of closed circuit TV surveillance. It was the run-up to Christmas and a busy shopping day in the centre of Liverpool. Cameras were monitoring the city as usual when, just after four o'clock, police received a report that a shopper had been stabbed and his killer was walking the streets, still holding the knife he'd used. Clearly what's happened here is that somebody's been stabbed and our main concern was to prevent this happening to another person. So it was vital that we located him and detained him as quickly as possible. CCTV operators frantically searched nearby streets with their cameras and quickly found the suspect. I was on foot patrol in the city centre when I got a call. We had an excellent description of him, uh, a black male pushing a shopping trolley. We also knew exactly whereabouts he was and which shops he was walking past. It was about this point where uh, I approached the man, obviously with caution because we believed that he was armed and he had a knife. Uh, as I went to speak to him, to pull him to one side, he pulled a 12-inch knife out and ran at me with it. Obviously, my first uh, instinct was to move out of his way. Uh, I called for assistance uh, back up from other colleagues and then was generally uh, more concerned about keeping shoppers out of his way. When I first arrived at the scene, the murder suspect was stood brandishing a knife. It was a very tense situation. Suddenly, a street trader who was sat alongside the murder suspect stood up. He was in a very dangerous situation. I think he was oblivious to the fact that the murder suspect was brandishing a knife. As officers pulled the street traders to safety, we took the opportunity, as a distraction was caused, to uh, move in on the murder suspect. Once we arrived at the, at the police vehicle, I asked him, did he have any more weapons about his person? And he told me he had another knife, similar to the ones we'd, which we'd just seized off him, hidden down his trouser leg in a homemade scabbard. The shopper who'd been stabbed died of his injuries. The man arrested was found to be suffering from paranoid schizophrenia and was sent to a secure hospital. What this incident illustrates is that the CCTV cameras are vital in enabling us to identify uh, and locate perpetrators of crime, thereby being able to get officers to the scene very, very quickly uh, to prevent anybody else being stabbed or seriously injured, which I believe in this case could quite possibly have happened. Every year, fire brigades around Britain are called out on nearly a million shouts. To fight them, a fire engine like this is packed with around 250 different pieces of equipment. But now, brigades also carry cameras and they can make the difference between life and death. Dawn in Bradford, West Yorkshire, and a plastics factory is turned into a toxic fireball. A fire brigade cameraman captures the action as 50 firefighters go into battle surrounded by poisonous gases. This video will later be shown to new recruits learning to use breathing apparatus. In fact, video is so effective in training that every fire brigade in Britain now has cameras. This is a one-off which you could not really stage. This is the real world, this is a real risk. Um, no textbook's going to explain that, basically. 
fire video is also used as evidence. Here, West Yorkshire firefighters are at their biggest ever shout. 32 pumps have been called to a huge fire at a chemical plant. More than 400 different substances are made here, but the company, Allied Colloids, haven't been storing them properly. As the heat increases, drums explode, sending balls of flame 100 feet high. The video was part of the investigation which followed. The company was fined £100,000. Fire brigades around the world have since used it as an example of how to fight chemical fires. But cameras don't just record fires, they're increasingly important in actually fighting them, aiding crews who otherwise can't see what they're tackling. When the crews are entering a building that's on fire, the first thing they, heat, uh, they meet is smoke, the heat of the fire, humidity when they've used water to extinguish the fire. They're blind, they're using the senses of touch, they're using the senses of hearing. Thanks to thermal image cameras, instead of seeing this, firefighters can see this. In spite of thick smoke, they know exactly where the heat is and where the fire is spreading. When this school caught fire in Chester, 500 children were safely evacuated and the blaze contained fast with the help of thermal pictures from a helicopter. They showed the fire spreading down a corridor, an added danger for firefighters on the ground. The large volumes of smoke were obscuring any clear view as to where the fire was travelling. The thermal image camera actually was able to trace very quickly where this fire was travelling and then we were able to uh, deploy our resources safely and effectively. It's equivalent to making a blind person see. Now thermal imaging is being used in the very latest firefighting camera, Command Eye. Fitted into the helmet, it beams pictures like this back to fire commanders in a mobile control unit. The officer in charge can see exactly what the crews are coming up against. Obviously, if um, he goes into a building and they notice that there's four casualties and there's only one crew in there, it will enable him to mobilise more crews and send more people into that building to rescue. But a skyscraper blaze is perhaps every firefighter's worst nightmare. The NatWest Tower in the City of London is Britain's second tallest building. It has 42 floors, and 500 people were inside when this fire began. From the air, thermal cameras again gave firefighters vital information. They could see the fire was in a cooling tower right at the top. Building plans showed the other two hotspots were just the heating system. The fire was brought under control in minutes, and everyone got out safely. Everywhere you look these days, it seems, there are cameras. The government says CCTV has had a massive impact on crime. In some places, it's been cut by 75%. In this week's Street Watch, a close-up look at one of the big success stories. Saturday night, and a youth kicks in a shop window. As he works his way down the main street in Barry, he attacks another window, and three more. It's easy to see why this town used to be called the Wild West of Wales. Certainly the public perception of the centre of town, particularly at night, was that parts of it were a no-go area. Then came 14 cameras watching Barry around the clock. In the area that's covered, there's been everything from uh, minor traffic shunts up to a full murder case. The cameras soon picked up a disturbing number of people carrying weapons. This man produced what turned out to be an imitation gun and pointed it at passers-by. He was later identified through the video and convicted. This woman was seen showing off another gun to her friends. It turned out to fire ball bearings, 
and she wasn't charged. And late one Friday, the operators were staggered when a man pulled out a two-foot samurai sword. The cameras led to a speedy arrest, and the man was convicted of possessing an offensive weapon. What it's done is enabled us to react quickly and perhaps um, diffuse the situation from becoming far more serious. The biggest cut in crime has been burglaries and thefts from shops. This couple were spotted breaking into a bakery. The CCTV operator called the police, who were able to get there within five minutes, making sure the couple left empty-handed. Barry also has a revolutionary scheme to cut shoplifting. Thieves used to cost this department store thousands of pounds a year. We used to have gangs of you steaming through the store, frightening our customers, uh, and it was becoming a serious problem for us. The scheme, known as StoreNet, links security cameras inside the shops with CCTV cameras outside. And therefore we are sort of almost ready for them as they come in through the doors. We've already had some major successes, so it's, it's a very good system. We now know that the local villains don't bother us. They know it's not worth coming into Dan Evans because there's a likely chance that they're going to get caught. Caught, like this youth, who climbed 50 feet up onto the roof of Barry Town Hall, believing he'd been seen by no one except the friends he was trying to impress. He then scaled the tower, determined to change the time. The youth was given a ticking off by the police. Time for a break, but stay with us because coming up, the woman who looks in yellow pages and finds guns for hire, she wants her husband dead. With cameras now smaller than a pinhead, our hide and seek challenge and two puppies trapped in a drain, rescued by a camera. I spy remarkable stories caught on surveillance cameras. In the underworld of crime, contract killings are just about the hardest cases to crack. Often the police have little choice but to go undercover, and their most important weapon is video. You got any choice how you want it done? Phoenix, Arizona. This man wants his ex-wife murdered to get custody of their daughter. He wants his boss and two business partners killed into the bargain. The couple in this car want their 20-year-old son dead because they blame him for being threatened with eviction from their home. And, you want him dead by... and this woman wants her husband of 28 years murdered because she can't face what she regards as the scandal of a divorce. But the man she's talking to isn't a killer, he's an undercover detective, and their meeting is being taped as evidence. Video makes the difference. We've done probably over 15 of them that we've ended up indicting and, and sending people to uh, uh, either prison or, or some sort of jail time. Charlene Bath, a Canadian, thought that in America's Wild West, she could hire a hitman. In the Yellow Pages, she found what she was looking for, a company called Guns for Hire. It is not really abnormal at all for me to get a, a call where somebody's asking me how much we'll charge to hold up a bus. Now they're talking about us, us holding up, uh, as actors, a busload of tourists. But this caller didn't want one of the Wild West theme events Guns for Hire normally offers. Gun smoke, Guns for Hire. All of a sudden I realized that yeah. she yeah. wanted to know in so many words if, if I could arrange for a professional to kill somebody. Yeah, we do the owner show. asked her to call back, by which time he'd call the police, and Detective uh, Ballantyne was there. He fixed a meeting in a car park the next day and hid a camera in nearby bushes to record what happened. She was so well prepared, it was shocking. It was as if I was going to a job interview. She pulled out a stack of papers and she had pages and pages and pages of questions. The price Charlene Bath put on her husband's life was $2,000 up front 
and 10,000 more when the job was done. What she believed was the best method was blowing them up, and they were having some problems within their business. There was a hostile takeover going on, and she thought it was the most believable that if he was blown up, it looked more organized crime. But in fact, as the story unfolded, Detective Ballantyne learned that Charlene Bath wanted her husband killed because she'd met another man. In her hometown, she was a Sunday school teacher, and everybody thought she had the perfect marriage and the perfect family. Divorce, she said, was not an option for her. In these investigations, you take it step by step and you don't rush it. And you give her every opportunity to back out of it. But meeting them face to face and seeing in their face and watching their mannerisms and watching how they act, that's, that's really where I find out, is this person serious about what they want to do? Finally, Detective Ballantyne needed no more convincing. He walked away, counting his money, and giving the signal for the police arrest team to move in. Amazingly, Charlene Bath's husband stood by her, and because of that, she was sentenced to just five years in jail. Now tonight's I Spy appeal. Can you help solve a crime witnessed by cameras? At a jeweler's in East London, a cockney charmer chats up staff to gain their confidence, spinning a yarn that he wants to buy something for his mother, who's working on a nearby market stall. He borrows a finger measure to take outside and check his mum's ring size. A few minutes later, he's back. He makes his selection, but wants to show his mum before parting with his cash. He then uses the gift of the gab to persuade staff to let him take a gold ring and a bracelet worth 840 pounds. He promised to return, but of course didn't. If you recognize the man, call Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Calls are free and confidential. That's 0800 555 111. Now meet Bianca. She's no ordinary dummy. She's the latest in store detectives. Shoplifting costs every one of us almost 20 pounds a year, and some shoplifters are so skilled, they know the camera's every weakness. But with Bianca around, now thieves never know for sure who's watching or from where. Two shoplifters at work in a bookstore in Dublin. They think they found a blind spot away from the main security cameras, but they're filmed by a pinhole camera built into a bookshelf. And this man in a London shop didn't expect a lift to be fitted with a tiny camera. Shoplifters everywhere are learning that there is now nowhere to hide. Cameras these days are getting so small that you can basically fit them anywhere. The average shoplifter would never dream of looking for something this size. Mark Kemp advises London's top stores and hotels on security. His company iSell says its cameras can be virtually impossible to find. So, we've challenged him to hide four cameras in an ordinary newsagent's shop and three volunteers to find them. Mark has hidden cameras in the clock, in a box of chocolates, in a box of candles, and in a packet of cold remedy. And just for us, this is where they all are. But we've also given the volunteers a rather big clue, a television showing the camera views. Something, of course, no shoplifter would ever have. Even with this, though, can they find the cameras? We give each five minutes. First in is security guard Colin Johnson. Found one. After just over a minute, he's onto something. Up there. Colin also gets the camera in the chocolates, but not all his guesses are spot on. No, that's not one there. There is a wire, but it could be, could be a light. Shop customer, Kate Williams, is taking a more hands-on approach. She's looking less for lenses and more for camera cables. I think it might be behind here. No. Yes, I've got one here. I think this might be... Yes, it's in this box. In yes, here. I think we can There's take that as a here. definite. I found it the camera. Must be in here. Unfortunately, we've now lost camera two. 
few minutes later, and Kate spots the second wire from the box of candles. Oh! I think there might be one in here. Yes! But she doesn't find the other two. Last up is Bimji Patel, an expert on security cameras. With his knowledge, will he get all four? Face in the back, so let's have a look at the clock. Yep, find one. Within a minute, he has the clock. He should. His company makes clocks like this. And with his more scientific approach, Bimji gets the best score. Yeah, somewhere. The one of them. He finds three out of the four cameras in five minutes. They all struggled, and not one managed to find them all. I think the message has got to be to the shoplifters is that we will be watching you, so beware. Finally tonight, a touching story which shows how miniature cameras can also reach the places human eyes can't. In the American city of Sacramento, two puppies have strayed and fallen down a hole. A plumbing company was called in when neighbours heard the puppies. They'd been stuck for 24 hours. There's no way to know exactly how much time they would have left and how much air they would have. This pipe was only six inches in diameter and 40 to 45 feet straight down. With a camera normally used on block drains, rescuers could now see where they were looking. The equipment that they brought with them was just fantastic. They brought a miniature video camera and it was connected to a long cable and they could actually lower this camera down the six inch well. Within 10 minutes, the camera finally found the pups. What concerned me the most was that the puppy underneath made what sounded to me like suffocating sounds. Rescuers raced against time, feeding down a noose to try to drag the puppies out. It was very delicate because we didn't want to tighten that noose too much and choke these puppies, but we had to get it tight enough so that we wouldn't drop them once, once we got them. The first puppy was caked in mud. He was having trouble breathing. So I gave him mouth to snout resuscitation. We pulled the second puppy up. Um, and we had somehow gotten the lasso up over his back end and the lasso fit around his middle. So we pulled him end up, is how he came up. When those puppies came out of that well, it was just like, it's the most exciting thing in the world. You know, it doesn't really matter whether it's a human life or, or another type of life. It's a life, and it means everything in the world to be there and be a part of saving them. That's it for tonight's I Spy. But there'll be more next week when we report on the police surveillance sting that caught 14 drug dealers. How this card move could have cheated a Las Vegas casino out of $75,000. And how a bank robber was caught by a security video taken as he bought a new coat. Until then, goodbye.